Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy. This is part of our stress month and I am so delighted that I have somebody in studio, so to speak, that we have on the phone that we're going to be interviewing today that has been through change. I mean, real life change. Some of you out there have experienced stress and gone through kind of some of these ideas of like the dark night of the soul or you've really been pushing spiritually or your whole life has fallen apart and then it seem to rematerialize itself into something amazing and beautiful and awesome. Well, that's kind of one of these stories that we're going to unpack today. And I am, I am delighted and excited to, to have Tara in the, in, in the studio. So Tara, welcome. Hi, how are you? I am doing great. And I, I, great. I just love hearing your story every single time. And I, I I bet I've told your story to other clients that have been in a difficult situation at least half a dozen times, if not more. Mm. And it's one of those things that, you know, I mentioned names, but it's, it's when people get to hear that, you mean other people have gone through kind of hellish stuff and come out the other side. Yes, we do do that. And we are stronger and we're different and we're, we're more, we're more us on the other side. So we're going to kind of go through all of that today. So to begin with, Tara, can you kind of give me maybe a little beginning about where, oh, just maybe a little bit in your life if you wish, or we can just start directly when, when you and I met, I'm, I'm game for either. What, give us some, some background as the beginning. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, I think it's important to just preface that I, you know, I'm in a, I'm in 12 step recovery. So um, I have, I'm very familiar with the concept of um, having something that, most people would perceive as being, you know, not good. Um, and sure. something that's very painful uh, turn into something very beautiful, which for me, it's, I'm uniquely qualified to help somebody else who's still suffering, you know, because I've been through <laughs> the suffering and then come out the other side. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, and just because I know a concept doesn't mean I always practice it 100% of the time, right? You know, sometimes sure. I need to be reminded and, um, and that brings me to when the, you know, the first time that I actually came to your office, um, mm -hmm. I was, uh, it was, it was COVID time. So it was 20, it was, it was 2020, it might've been pushing into 2021. I don't remember I, exactly, yeah. but um, I was, I worked for a multi-billion dollar corporation and, um, you know, uh, they were leaning on me very heavily to get the COVID vaccine. And at this time, it was the time when a lot of companies were in the government were saying like, hey, you know, if you don't do this, we're going to fire you. And my work had not told me they were going to fire me. They just called me to the office more than once and just said, you know, hey, how do you feel about this? And I, uh, you know, told them, well, I'm not going to do it. So <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was really, you know, honestly, there was a lot of fear going around. There was a lot of fear everywhere going around. And, and I, you know, live in this uh, area where people were afraid of me if I would tell them that I hadn't gotten vaccinated yet. And, and so I had like a lot of feelings about that. And I was like not standing up for myself and I was very afraid. And so a friend of a friend had me like, hey, um, you know, there's this, there's this uh, doctor, this chiropractor who um, you might want to go see because maybe he'll write you an exemption. I don't know, right? And I was like, yes. that sounds perfect. So then I came, so I scheduled an appointment under the guise of like, I just really need to go to the chiropractor. And I'd never been to the chiropractor in my entire life. And uh, then I remember coming into this appointment just full of fear and I was so scared. I was really stressed out. And, um, and I came in and I told you my my story about this this vaccine and how scared I was and how I didn't want to take it and um, how uh, I think I need an I need an exemption written so that they can't fire me and um, you know and I went into and I don't remember exactly it was a while ago so I don't remember exactly all of the things that I said but I do remember that by the time I was done talking I was I was crying I was like tears were running down my face and I was crying and um, and then I don't remember exactly what you said, but I know it was something along the lines of, um, do you realize that you have made up a story, fabricated a story in your head about what you think could happen, but, but hasn't, and you're so upset about it that you're actually crying. And yes. it was like, 
I, it was just like a aha moment for me because I knew, I knew the concept, but I wasn't living in it at all. And, um, and I just, I just realized in that moment, like I am making a story up that it, cause I don't know the future. Nobody knows the future. Right. And so I was making a story up in my head and I was so stressed out about it. I was so upset about it. That I was actually in tears and, um, it wasn't even, it wasn't even real. <laughs> and then, um, you know, and then I, uh, the moment you were like, oh, let's, you know, do x-rays and, you know, see if you, what you need to do for your adjustment for your back. Right. And that, and then that was like the next thing. And then it was just kind of like over, it was like a non-issue and you did And, um, you know, I didn't need the exemption and my work never fired me and none of that even came true. And so, and I had been spent months, um, thinking about that, yeah. you know, scenario prior to going to your office. So, so it, it is, it is fascinating that, as I I work so hard to stay present that each person comes to me with, with what they're going through. And I, it's like, I just get to let spirit, which is both of us, which is all of us speak that, which each of us probably needs to hear. And I love it when, when people do the same thing for me. And I, I do remember that aha moment on your face was just like this kind of, Oh my gosh. And I do remember you said, I did. I just made all that up in my head. And you were just, I was, I was watching and you were just living in that moment and just relishing this, this idea that what in the world did I just do to myself? Mm -hmm. And so coming through that was, was really quite interesting. And I, I was trying to think, did I write her an exemption? I don't remember if I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, because no, like, I don't even think I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, didn't, you clearly didn't think I needed it. And so I just, yeah, I just went about my life and it was, yeah. Yeah. And, and I knew that I was like, hey, if it ever comes to that, let's ride it. It's not a deal. But at this point, let's, let's move on with what we've got. And I remember at that point, you, you were kind of on this journey already with changing body shape and running and, and really trying to get kind of the last little bit of weight that you, yeah. that you held off. And I want to have you speak a little bit to that, if you would. Sure. I, um, yeah, I was in a it really like that was kind of a pivotal point. And in, in, I look at that as a really pivotal point in my spiritual journey. I've had like several different spiritual um, awakenings, almost like peeling an onion, if you will, where um, different things happened. And that one was pretty dramatic for me because um, I think it kind of like catapulted me into another like just the, the next spiritual journey that I was on, I actually started reading um, spiritual literature after that, that I hadn't really uh, explored before. Um, yeah. I read, a, I finished reading A Course in Miracles and um, read through that. And then I also read um, A Coffee of Life and Mosquito Principle mm -hmm. and The Mosquito Principle. And um, that book um was it, it talked about how the, it's a chiropractor who wrote it and he talks about how when your spirit when you're physically aligned then you become you can be aligned and i don't think that it's a coincidence that my next phase of my spiritual journey like started when i started getting adjustments um i think sure. that like they kind of went uh coincided and um yes. and i ended up uh joining a, another 12-step program that was for uh that deals with food i had um uh, like an eating disorder too. Um, and so uh, I was able to be relieved of my eating disorder and um, and grow spiritually there. Um, and during that time, I um, it, it was funny because I, I was married um, and I'd been married for quite a while to a, a man who was atheist and uh, alcoholic who drank every day. And um, and it wasn't really a good fit, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a bad relationship and is like we fought or anything like that. We just, it was just not like a very good fit. And, um, you know, I, I read that somewhere that like when you go through a spiritual awakening, um, if you're partnered with someone, they either have to join you or leave. They have no other choice. And, um, and my husband, um, fell in love with somebody else and, uh, it was, you know, and it, it was interesting because people were mad for me. Like people were like, oh, you know, 
screw him and just like you know i can't believe he did this to you and like and my mom you know she would say stuff like you know all we ever did was welcome into our family and he's just you know bailing on you and because i had been really practicing um this idea that you know um everything was working out the way it's supposed to work out or the fact that like negative situations always have a silver lining. They always hundred percent of the time do. I just went through this divorce with this big smile on my face. Not that I didn't shed a couple tears, but you know, with this big smile on my face, and every time someone asked me there, I was just like, you know, there's something waiting for me. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something waiting for me. And furthermore, I've watched my, you know, well then husband, talk on the phone to this woman he's in love with and he's never talked on the phone like that to me or I've never seen him act that way for me so I a don't want to keep him if he's not I'm not the one for him and b there's there's something waiting for me that is so much so much better and um you know I just recently actually met the something better that was waiting for me and so much better than I could have ever imagined you know I just I put out my intentions in the universe that I just wanted somebody I could grow spiritually with um And I, and this person crossed my path who is on a spiritual, who's had a spiritual awakening is on a spiritual journey that mirrors mine. And we are able to just do all of the things that I had to do alone before I can do together with another person. And so, you know, the, you know, the divorce was a divorce and, and, and it was um, a lot of people would perceive it as negative. Um, You know, same with like, alcoholism and drug addiction and food addiction and you know people can view view these things as negative but on the other side of it there's always something beautiful and um i'm living in a spot right now that's absolutely amazing a life beyond my wildest dreams as you would say and if something bad happens which you know or perceived as bad happens i'm sure that uh i i know that um that there's going to be something beautiful that comes from it sometimes So I want to, I just kind of want to recap because you talked about Arnaud Bernier and his book, The Cafe of Life. And it is a great book. And I am so pleased. I have the pleasure when, when I'll have clients that, that bring me in a book and I had never read that book and you brought it into me and it was excellent. I remember going through it and just waiting because I, I knew this was something that I needed to read and it, it just popped out. So I love that it popped out for you. What this mosquito principle, can you expand it just a bit more for us? Um, gosh, uh, I don't know if I'll do it much, much justice. I, I would hope that somebody who's interested will re- actually just read the book because he says it better than me, but sure. it was kind of his journey into, uh, what I kind of got out of it was it's his journey from like Eastern medicine into like Western medicine, right? And um, and how different it is, and how we cure the we try to cure the um, we try to manage the symptoms rather than um, live live healthily healthy in the first place, right? And sure. and I actually after reading the book, um, I had a weight loss surgery like seventeen years, eighteen years ago or something like that, and um, which um. I, I don't recommend actually, but I yeah. did it. It was, I was uh, just, you know, it was something I did. And um, yeah. I had been taking uh, Prilosec for my heartburn for 16 or 17 years. And every time I stopped taking it, it would, uh, it would start to burn. Uh, like I would, I would have heartburn again. So I would just think like, I always have to take this medicine because if I stop taking it, it hurts. Right. Yeah. And in his book, um, he talks about how, uh, that pain is actually, you know, our body's telling us something and that um, Western medicine just like covers up all the pain all the time, right? Like I have a minor ache, like we'll even take Advil and Tylenol in preparation to not hurt. Like I don't even hurt sure. yet. I'm going to take some Tylenol <laughs> so I don't hurt later. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And so I was like, huh, so maybe I just need to feel a little bit of pain. And, you know, the craziest thing is I stopped taking the Prilosec and it hurts like it always did. And then, like, it just stopped hurting, you know? Mm. And, like, I don't have to take it anymore. I never did. It just was <laughs> me thinking that I had to, right? Some do- a doctor told me, you have to take this. And yeah. if I stopped taking it, it hurt. And I thought, oh, I'll never get through this. It hurts. I have to take it. And, yeah, it hurt for a few days. But then, like, for, I don't know, it might have been more, like, a week or two where it was, like, my body had to, like, start making the stomach acid in a normal way again or whatever. But, um, yeah. 
but I, you know, I'm not saying I never get heartburn. You know, I try not to eat like certain things like pineapple or whatever. It's really manageable and it, and I don't have to take anything. Um, sure. So that, that little, that little impulse of pain, he says, is important as a message mm-hmm. that, hey, not only is the body trying to do something, but sometimes we need that reinforcement to continue to focus on that. So please leave me alone and stop addressing the symptom. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's and really he, also cool. talks, he also talks about, um, it's also fascinating that he talks about birth and, and death and, uh, in the yeah. book that I, I think is a really cool thing, too, where um, he talks about the energy around it and, it just is, I thought that was really cool as well. So. Yeah, he's he's a very uh, uplifting individual for sure. Mm-hmm. So one one last thing I want to touch on is mm-hmm. tell me a little bit more about fear based thinking and how it develops into anger. Yes, for me, for me, and this is a concept I've kind of like learned over the years. Um, but I I used to be a very angry person. Like I was, I was scared a lot and I was mad a lot and I would get angry frequently um, about lots of different stuff, you know, I mean, just easily irritable, right? I'd be angry if somebody didn't do the dishes and left them there, or I'd be angry if somebody was driving too slow in front of me, or I'd be angry if, you know, um, I perceived somebody as judging me or I'd be angry. And there was like all of these things that I'd be angry about all the time. And, um, and what I've uh, what I've learned for myself is that when I'm when I'm mad about something, it's like almost a hundred percent of the time for me it's fear based, right? I'm just full of fear and insecurities, and so I'll be really I'll be really angry about something. And um, I guess I could tell you an example, just an example sure. of the, like one of the last times I got really angry. Uh, my son, I was I had the screen door that was broken, the handle was broken, and so I tore it all apart. And I went to Home Depot and I got a new piece, the piece that I thought I needed to put in the door. And I called my adult son and I said, hey, what are you doing? I need you to help me put this door handle on. And he's like, well, I can't. I'm busy. And I knew that he was just playing video games. Right. And I was like, I was like, you're not. I got mad. I was like, fine, fine. I was like, well, I need I really need help is what I said. I need you to help me do this. He's like, well, I'm busy. I can't do it. And I was like, fine, I'll do it myself. And I hung up on him like mad. Like I, I was. I was super angry about it. Yeah. And um, by the time I got home, um, I really, like, because I asked myself this question when I get mad. I asked myself, what are you afraid of, Tara? What is it that you're afraid of? And when I asked myself that question in that situation, I said, um, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to fix it on my own. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do it. So by the time I got home, I, I apologized to him and I said, hey, you know, I'm sorry that I acted that way and I hung up. I was like, I'm just scared that I'm not going to be able to fix this door. And mm. he's like, well, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm saying it now, right? So um, <laughs> it's, uh, to me, it's like a fear-based. And the thing about fear, just like I mentioned earlier in, in the off, like when I came to that first office visit, is, is the fear, fear is like, he's, fear is the boogeyman. It doesn't yeah. exist. Whatever it is you're afraid of, hasn't even actually happened yet you know it's, it's a future thing that we're concerned about that we don't know because all we have is the day right so he's got this boogeyman that's causing me anger and all i need to do to get over that is like trace my anger back to like tar what is it that you're afraid of and then when i can answer that question it relieves me of my it relieves me of my anger and sometimes the question's a little harder than others but it's usually it's it's always something you know there's always something that's scary to me i'm afraid it usually has to do with like losing stuff like what are you afraid of well i'm afraid that i'm going to lose blank whatever it is and that i'm attached to you know you know that that's that's wonderful because that actually changes my thinking because i've i've looked at some things while you're talking that i've done in the last oh couple of months where I, I got a little miffed here and for me to even get a little miffed is, is something but I didn't quite understand how to frame it towards the other person for a what I consider as an authentic deeply deep meaningful sorry and I love how you put it like hey I just realized I was afraid and this is what I was afraid of and when we do that we become very vulnerable but also transparent and authentic which is so attractive and loving for people they're like well of course of you when you do that 
and that you're showing me exactly who you are and it's it's like your son just to me this is why did you say that and of course we think well because i guess i was also afraid about you know what you would have thought you know that, that all these things that we think that are just totally you know made up in our own head mm -hmm. and and so that's that's that is amazing if we can just real briefly go into just a little bit of aspect of how how did you handle stress when when you were younger and what were some things that you would go through and how do you tend to handle stress now or does it does does it even come near you anymore yeah um well it, it because i am because i am an addict and a, an alcoholic um i definitely dealt with all of my stress by up with a substance so sure. um which uh you know stunted my stunted my growth when it came to like how i dealt with stress so mm -hmm. um when i when i were when i was removing these substances from my life um my stress level would increase you know and so um that's and that's the beauty of going through 12-step programs too because they really like deal with that on a level that can kind of like give you some tools to to handle it but um yeah i uh i don't so like I would always cover it up. So now I I'm, I have no numbing agents agents in my life at all. Like no, I don't have anything. I mean, I really don't. When I have a feeling, I have to feel that feeling. Like that's yeah. what happened. Um, but I do have a lot of uh, a lot of tools today to to deal with my feelings. And I don't. I would say that especially for the like environment that I live in. You know, I have a corporate job and I. Um, you know, I, I have a mortgage payment and, you know, all of the stuff that people have um, sure. that might be stressful. Uh, I don't I don't feel like I feel a lot of stress. And I think the reason is, is because I do have practices that I that I partake in that really uh, are stress relieving for me. One is exercise. I do love to run and exercise. I think the endorphins released for me when I do that are mm -hmm. um are amazing and uh you know i know not everybody can be a runner but i i know that everybody can engage in some kind of uh, endorphin endorphin releasing exercise and i i think that's super important and then i i, I meditate or spend quiet time daily mm -hmm. um which is really also important to me like when i first started practicing that i mean five minutes like i could get five minutes and i was just like watching the clock like are we done yet you know and um sure. now i can sit there for a really long time a really long time and just enjoy it and enjoy it right and i enjoy yeah. that and um uh it, it makes me it just makes my world a whole lot different and um and i know people react differently to me and i react differently and i don't have to be mad today i don't get mad and if i do it's like a split second and i and I realized like, okay, what is going on here? And I, and I correct my behavior because um, one thing I love, I love the uh, idea that I really love is if I'm not the problem, then there is no solution. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out what the problem is, like what my problem is so that I have a solution. Because if, if you're the problem, there's no solution for me. So I have to make, I have to figure out what my part is. So. That's beautiful. That, that's amazing. I, I hope everybody rewinds that and plays that several times. <laughs> that's awesome. That is really good. Well, Tara, thank you so much for at least letting us all kind of look into your life and, and what you've been through and what you've gone through and, and the beauty that is now. Do, do you have any like things that you see coming up or I mean, is there any far, far vision, anything that that you think is on the on the horizon oh gosh i don't know i try not to like i mean obviously i have plans you know because everybody makes plans and stuff but i try to just stay in their day and not have like really um i i, I know that i just want to continue my spiritual practice um mm -hmm. and and i'm really excited about uh, my new relationship and the fact that um i have somebody i can grow with spiritually and i for me I just want to, um, you know, I get down on my hands and knees sometimes and just, I'm like so thankful for what I have and just, you know, ask for the opportunity to help somebody else for today and, and ask for the opportunity to spiritually grow. And, um, you know, when you ask for stuff like that, the universe answers you. And then that's in my experience. So. 
Yes. I, I know that my listeners will be like, I want to know about the relationship. And we're not going to go there. <laughs> That's yours. But I have met him and he, I mean, I remember thinking, there's a really good presence here. And so it, it's, it's really, it's really awesome. I just, I just love it. I love, I love when you come in and your energy. And then when he came in, it was like, oh, this is really good. This is nice. And so it was, it was, it was fabulous. So I, I, I can't wait to see it unfold a little bit. And what little tidbit you'll throw me is wonderful. And so thank you. Thank you for being part of my life too. I, I totally appreciate you in so many different capacities. So thank you. So until next time, I'm Dr. Troy. And remember, there is way more right with you than there is wrong with you. <laughs>